Is Intel's new i9 chip the M1 killer? What's going on YouTube? Yes, Intel, the company that's been struggling to recover from Apple's transition to their own silicon, has finally put out a pretty impressive chip, but guys, there's a catch. So we're gonna break it down. Before we get started, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. Okay, so Intel's been crying like a baby ever since Apple has decided to transition fully to their own silicon over the last couple of years. We've seen it in the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, the iMac, and these were all chips that started with the iPhone and iPad and things like that, and the performance in them is insane. We first saw M1, and it took the world by storm. Everybody was impressed with the benchmarks this thing was capable of while maintaining that efficiency, maintaining the thinness of the laptops and the portability. Well, then we got M1 Pro and M1 on Max, and it just took the game to an entirely new level. But is the reign of Apple Silicon already over? As Intel has directly put their new chip in contention with the M1 Max, not the M1 Pro, but the best chip Apple has to offer. But like I said, there's a catch to this. Now the chip in question is Intel's new i9 14 core, that should be your first little red flag, 12,900HK chip, and this clocks in at an amazing five gigahertz, and that's with eight efficiency cores and six performance cores. Now to compare that to the M1 Max, you're looking at eight performance cores and only two efficiency cores in a 10 core chip. So you're probably starting to see it's not quite an apples to apples comparison, but although Intel has not given us any solid numbers yet, it does claim that the chip beats the Apple M1 Max chip in certain tests. But the discrepancy I wanna to bring to your attention is eight efficiency cores in the Intel i9 versus six performance cores. This is supposed to be a high performance chip set to beat the M1 Max. Well, that's where we get to the catch. You see, Apple still has the edge when it comes to efficiency and power. So they had to jam pack this new i9 chip with eight efficiency cores, more efficiency cores than performance cores because Apple's chip uh, runs at about 60 watts most of the time and on its hardest workloads, 90, never really more than that. Whereas the Intel chip can draw up to 115 watts of power. So you know these chips are going to run insanely hot because Apple Apple couldn't even optimize the cooling for these devices with a full metal chassis. And ultimately they had to put more cores in the chip to beat Apple's 10 core processor with a 16 core neural engine and a 32 core GPU. So bottom line, is it impressive? Well, yeah, any mobile processor that can beat the M1 Max in anything, I think deserves some kudos. Well, at the same time, I think it's kind of gimmicky, type of flash in the pan type of thing, because all Apple has to do is play with their efficiency core to performance core ratio, or just add four more cores, like is in the Intel i9 chip, or they could just throw 15 watts more power to match up with the Intel chip, and I think we would see a very different story. So I don't think that this Intel chip is ultimately any kind of threat to what Apple is doing with their own silicon. And it shows that basically 10 cores of Apple is roughly equal to 14 cores of Intel. And as long as they can keep that the same, Apple should have no problem. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Did you expect Intel to bounce back at all this quickly? They've really been struggling and putting out a lot of ads also guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and click the bell as we got a ton of content planned for 2022 and you don't want to miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show.